Hi, I was planning on releasing a video about once every week. However, I went to Thailand for the AIC conference and then to China to visit a couple of universities. And on my way back, I became really ill. I've been at work for about 10 days now, so I'm sorry I'm just getting around to this uh, fourth video now. So let's get straight into the topic today, which is, is black a colour? Of course, we need to start by defining what we mean by colour. You might want to look at my two previous videos about this topic. But whenever I have a new class of students at the University of Leeds, I always ask them the question, how many colours are there? And I get various answers. Someone will always say there are about 16 million different colours. And this is because there are about 16 million different RGB combinations on a typical colour display. Someone always says there are only three colours. When I ask if anyone thinks there could be more than 16 million, someone will normally say that they think there are an infinite number of colours. Of course, this is consistent with someone thinking that colour is a physical property, because if we can have infinitesimally small changes in dyes and pigments, we could have an infinite number of colours according to that definition. And then, if we push a bit harder, someone will put their hand up and say, there are no colours, zero. And by this, I think they mean there are zero colours in the world and that all the colours are in our heads. So we get answers ranging from zero to infinity. I then follow this up by asking how many countries there are. Well, according to the UN, there are 195 countries, but there are a few grey areas, in my opinion, such as, for example, whether England and Scotland are separate countries. Um, not according to the UN, apparently. But anyway, when I ask students to estimate how many countries there are, I tend to get answers from about 150 to 250 or 300. Nobody says there are no countries at all or that there are an infinite number of countries. So why do we have such a wide range of answers when we ask about colour, but a much smaller range when we ask about countries? The reason for this is that when we use the word country, we have a pretty good idea, a shared understanding of what it means. When we use the word colour, we don't. And to further illustrate this point, in the class, I may show something like this and ask students whether the two small circles are the same colour or not. About half the students will say that they are the same colour and half will say that they're not. This difference is not because people see colour differently. We, are, we can all see that the two circles look different in colour. The difference in opinion is because people have different ideas about what colour is. So it's important to start like this. Now, we don't need to go through it all again. Thank goodness, you might say. As I mentioned, if you're interested in colour ontology, please watch the previous two videos I made, if you can bear it. But for now, I will simply say that colour is a perception. And that in my opinion, if two patches look different in colour, they are different in colour. Now... I do think that some scientists, physiologists in particular, might argue that black is not a colour. The reason for this is that the visual system um, has a channel. When I say channel, I mean a neural pathway that encodes luminance. We have two separate opponent channels that encode the chromatic information. These are the red, green and yellow, blue channels. So the red, green and yellow, blue channels encode the chromatic information and the luminance channel encodes achromatic information. But sometimes people might rather sloppily say something like the red, green and yellow, blue channels encode the colour information, suggesting that the luminance channel has got nothing to do with colour. Again, it's this issue about words and what they mean and whether colour and chromatic mean the same thing. 
the idea that black and grey are somehow not colours, but that you can make a small change, just a tiny bit of blue, for example, and now you get something that is coloured, and that these two things are materially different, seems very odd to me. Rather, despite the fact that we have um, various channels that encode different things in the brain, we have a unified perception of colour. And yes, that perception has different attributes, e.g. lightness, chroma and hue that we've discussed before. But our internal perception of colour can be described by a smoothly varying colour space, if I can use that word. Black, white and grey are part of that space, of course. And they are a special class of colours that have no chroma and also have no hue or indeterminate hue. But nevertheless, they are colours. That's my opinion, at least. If you define colour differently, you might come to a different conclusion. I want to finish with two related questions that crop up quite a lot on the internet. Firstly, is black the absence of colour? The answer should be obvious now. No, it is not the absence of colour, it is the absence of chroma. It's not the same thing. Secondly, is black the absence of light? Well, no, it isn't. Imagine you go inside a room and there's no internal light and no way that light can enter. We can say that there is an absence of light. What will you see? Black. So the absence of light is black. But that doesn't mean that the black is the absence of light. It's simple logic. For example, all dogs are animals, but this does not mean that all animals are dogs. Pretty much every black thing that you have ever seen, clothing, paint, plastics, etc., reflects light. Most objects in the world reflect about 4% of the light that falls upon them. This is to do with the difference in refractive index between the object and air. About 4% of light is reflected at that interface. So if you say that to be black, something has to reflect no light, then I would say that you've probably never seen a black thing in your life. There is a nanomaterial called Vanta Black, which reflects a lot less than 4% of light. But even Vanta Black reflects some light, and most people have never seen it in real life anyway. In fact, it's not even the case that things look black because they don't reflect much light. Imagine a piece of white paper and a piece of black paper. The white paper reflects 95% of light at all wavelengths, and the black paper reflects 5%. And we look at them indoors, and let's assume there are 100 units of light in the light source. So the white paper reflects 95 units of light at each wavelength, and the black paper reflects five units at each wavelength. But now let's take them outdoors where the illumination is much brighter. Let's assume that there are 10,000 units of light in the light source at each wavelength. It really can be that much, much, much brighter outside on a sunny day. So the white paper now reflects 9,500 units of light at each wavelength and the black paper reflects 500 units at each wavelength. So here's the thing. The black paper reflects more light, 500 units, to the eye outdoors than the white paper does, 95 units, indoors. So why does the black paper look black in both conditions? It's not because it doesn't reflect much light in an absolute sense, but rather that it reflects a lot less light than other objects in the scene. In other words, blackness is a relative concept. In fact, so is whiteness and so is colour. Colour is relative. <clears throat> it's the same reason why 
You could have a wide projection screen in a dull room, and none of the screen looks black, of course. But now you project light in the form of an image onto the screen, and you can get black. The screen can't be reflecting less light than before we turn the projector on. There's no such thing as negative light. But simply, parts of the screen now look black because they reflect a lot less light than some other parts of the screen. Again, black is a relative concept. So I hope you found this episode interesting. Um, I first started talking to the public about colour in the late 1980s. And the question that I got asked uh, more than any other was, um, is black a colour? I hope I've convinced you today that black is a colour, albeit an achromatic one. And also that the ideas that black is the absence of colour or that black is the absence of light um, it is a very sloppy way to speak and don't really fit with reality. So we shouldn't really be teaching those sorts of things. So um, next week is Christmas, so I'll post again in early 2024. Uh, until then, uh, bye for now.